Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. The sun's out, the daffodils are out, the sky's blue, it's warm, it's just spring is right around the corner, and I'm pumped up for it, but I'm super pumped up about our guest today, Mary Ellen Miller. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks I for was having me. glad we ran into each other at Barnes & Noble probably two months ago, and you said, hey, you have a podcast still, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm glad you still listen, and, <laughs> and then I'm excited that you've made it on. Thank was, you. Our guest list is really hard to get on. Just kidding. It's really (laughs) fun to get on because we have just great people. So welcome to the podcast. Have you done lots of podcasts before? I've done a few. Well, that's good. This is my third. And so we'll be, we'll just be getting, getting it going. (laughs) Um, So the reason you, I ran into you at a bookstore, oddly, is because you just wrote a book. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the book you wrote. Well, I wrote the book called Fill the Damn Thing Up which is about my experiences as communicator on the Boone Dam project. Yeah. And it's important to say the subtitle here because this book is relevant to any project manager or to a public relations or communications person on any kind of a project. Yeah. And the subtitle is Building Connections, just what we're doing here. That's right. And communicating throughout the life cycle of infrastructure projects. And like I say, really communicating through any project. Yeah, for sure. um, The name We'll tie it back here to Johnson City. Comes from the store Boomtown. Remember they used to have apparel? They had like hats and t-shirts that said, fill the damn thing up. Yes. And what's really funny is that I don't think they realized at the time was that our engineers and geologists on the project would be wearing that that tire coming into meetings. And so when I sat down to write the book, I thought, oh, that's got to be the title. But of course, I had to ask their marketing guy's permission. Yeah. And he loved it. And yeah. I give him credit on the first page. And I'm like, this came from this wonderful store, Boomtown. That's fantastic. <laughs> and Boomtown is here in Johnson City. And mm-hmm. they have one in Kingsport, too. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Johnson City Living Podcast. You knew what's coming. We'll jump back into the book here in a second. But our listeners are just on the edge of their seats wanting to know what... Mary Ellen loves about Johnson City. What's your favorite thing about Johnson City? I had so many, I had to write them down. Ooh, okay. (laughs) I love this. How many do you have? A whole bunch. Wow, (laughs) she's got like top 30. I started with, I love the vibe. And so I knew you were going to throw this question at me. And I was downtown having lunch at White Duck Taco with my son and my husband on Saturday. So good. Because their queso is unbelievable. I had the fish taco. It was delicious. Carlin loves the fish taco. I love their fish taco. And um, then we walked out and we're looking at Founders Park and then we see the mural. There's a guy with a guitar walking past the mural with the guy with the guitar. I'm like, this place is amazing. Yeah. Where, where, do, where do I stop? Um, track bikes. Uh, I work at Spark Plaza. I'm uh, a member there. And so it's so great to have that vibe. Yeah. Of, Jose and Shannon's like uh, mastermind, working, yes. co-working, networking project house. It's just super cool. Absolutely. That, that, you know, it's truly a spark when you see somebody there and, and, um, you can bounce I love ideas spark off them. I think it's the best idea ever. Me too. And, um, the Tweetsie Trail is a whole story practically in itself. My husband and I run out there usually a couple of days a week. Love the Tweetsie Trail. Yeah. And then I have, um, really, to sum it up, it's small town with a big city feel. Amen. And examples of that would be like, we went to see My Fair Lady at the Martin Center just a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Big, How cool was that? Big, huge yeah. Broadway show. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. I heard Mitch Album speak at the Martin Center a couple of weeks after that with the ETSU Festival I- Ideas. And let's, what about ETSU in and of itself? It's awesome. What a fabulous. Yeah engine economic engine to our area one of our so, guests said that she that was her favorite thing about johnson city's etsu there you go isn't that cool so so i know i had a lot of things there but um and then my, want to hear a funny story my husband said you need to tell them about the pronunciation so i'm going to tell you a little story here i love it i came down here as a broadcaster originally on jhl years ago i do remember that's that. what brought me to the area and so my then news director sat me down just like this and said repeat after me appalachian <laughs> And so I said it, and then he said, Elizabethton. That was going to be my next one. 
It's not so, Elizabeth Town. <laughs> no, my husband said you have to mention those stories as yes. well. But um, and then the fun cultural differences that I think still hold, even though I know we have many people from other areas here. Um, I moved down. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, but I moved down here many, many years ago, and and this is home, and my husband's from here, and all that. But um, I know there was always a cultural difference that you never honked your horn here, right? You you just waited patiently for the person in front of you. I won't call it audible on that. Okay. You do honk your horn because you see somebody. You go, beep, beep, beep. Yes. And you, <laughs> so that's how you honk your horn here. And that really reminds you, we have the wave here too, right? Oh. Different kinds of wave, but we wave, you know? I wave at everybody. And if you don't wave, it's like, why didn't they wave? <laughs> like, I'm going in and out of my neighborhood all the time. I'm waving at people every time. I'm like, hey, there's my best friend. I don't know you, but you're, hey, right. hey, hey, hey. Right. So there, you got a list from me, but I just love Johnson City, as you can tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been here? Oh, my goodness. It's um, way over 30 years now. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Came down in the so this is home. Yep. Where did you grow up? I grew in up Buffalo. in Buffalo, New York, okay. the, a suburb called Williamsville. Okay. And then I went to school first couple of years at Cortland, and I, then I transferred to Cornell and yeah. graduated from there in communications. Nice. And so I, I lived in uh, Cortland, Elmira, Ithaca, and Buffalo. So I never thought I'd leave upstate New York. Yep. Did my internship up there, but then the job brought me down here, and you the rest is history. I did. With the city and your husband. Yes, both. <laughs> in that order, probably, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the husband. I don't know. Um, so did you ever think when you were in like school that you're going to write a book, become an author? Well, I've always been a communicator. That's a really neat question. Um, so probably in the back of my mind, I can tell you that I had a mom message and she's unfortunately now deceased, but she used to always say, you're going to write a book one day. So I think those positive mother messages maybe come out, even if it's years later. That's great, because we, yeah, we put those on our boys all the time. We're like, you can do mm -hmm. this, you can do that. And so I think that's cool that you had it in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right, so this was an easy project. Uh. It happened <laughs> like in a few weeks. Sure. And you didn't have a whole lot to talk about, right? <laughs> I, uh, I had the pleasure of reading I'm going to say, full disclosure, half of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoyed it. It was great. Um, and I'm looking forward to finishing it. So, Thank you. Um, let's, let's open up. Um, it started back in 2014. I didn't realize it was that long ago where, the, where they, is that when they, the Corps of Engineers or um, TVA, I don't know who identified the, what is the muddy seat? Right. Yes. Yeah. So it was TVA. And by the way, uh, full disclosure, I am not anymore a spokesperson for TVA, so this is just me sharing my story. Nor are you an engineering expert, nor myself. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct, but I am a communicator. So do not uh, hire us to build you a dam. We don't, <laughs> no, that would not be good. good. Right. <laughs> but um, the the dams were built by the Greatest Generation, and oh, they built them to last. And technically, the dams are only supposed to last about fifty years, but this one lasted like sixty three or more. And so it was doing really well. Uh, but then during, um, first there was a muddy, uh, muddy uh, excuse me, a sinkhole discovered in the parking lot of the control building. And a very short while later, the dam safety inspector found a muddy seep at the base of the earthen embankment. So when you look at the dam from that overlook over there in gray, mm -hmm. a lot of people probably are familiar with that. They, tend, they see from that overlook the concrete dam, but perpendicular to that runs the earthen embankment. And all the issues related to the dam came from the earthen Earth embankment. And, embankment. Gotcha. and what happens when you see a muddy seep, Colin, is that indicates what potentially could be called internal erosion and the number two cause of dam failure in the world. So um, I, I, that was certainly nothing that was ever played up at the time because, you know, you don't want to be a scare. <laughs> right. Run, but that really was the gravity of the situation, that the dam had to be kept safe and stable and so um, there was a direct correlation between lowering the lake above the dam, the reservoir above the dam, um, down about 10 feet below Winter Pool that people are used to. It came down even a little more. For our listeners, this is Boone Dam. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it holds back the reservoir of Boone Lake, which Correct. is probably the, I mean, it's mainly the biggest body of water in our region. I mean, it's close to South Holston. Probably South Holston bigger, maybe? Uh, yeah, South Holston and Watauga would be bigger, but it's right here, but it's kind of in right the middle in of the city. Yes. It's right in our backyard. Yes. I mean, and it winds all around Piney Flats. Mm -hmm. up in, I mean, it's beautiful. There's it so is. much lakefront and so many people with lake houses. Right. And it's a huge recreational lake. And so 
when it had an issue, it was a big deal because it, yes. we, we, it's very apparent. Yes. And so they dropped the lake every year for winter runoff, mm -hmm. I believe, or something. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered why. I'm like, we not, it's, it's, like not like we have, we, it's not like we have snow melts of massive proportions <laughs> anymore. Or I guess if we had tons of floods, but rain it, floods. But it is about flood control. It's That's about why flood they control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so every year it drops, what, 10, 12 feet? Yeah, I think about 10 feet, but it, this went down another additional 10. So it went way down yes. as, from what us natives here have been looking at for the last 20 years. It was like, right. oh, wow, it's way down. And right. so this leads us to the conversation of sure. the dam issue. And I'm glad you got into that a little more because we just sort of launched into that conversation. Yeah, we did. Because you and I, we, we know what the <laughs> right. dam is. And so, and I got calls as an agent all the time like, hey, we're looking for lake houses, but we hear you don't have a lake currently. And I'm like, well, we don't, but they're working on it. And we should have one in five to seven years. Exactly. And that's the way it went. Yeah. And um, they would not have invested $400 million in this kind of an infrastructure project if it wasn't going to come back. If people right. ever asked me that question, that was the answer I'd give. You know, they're going to make sure it works, that it's done safely and that it's done right. And if they build them for a 50-year life cycle, they're probably planning on rebuilding them, right? Because well, yeah, it, it, that's kind of a, a misnomer. No, I'm just saying that, that that was a generalization to say, well, they should last about 50 years. Right. If just they, kind of what you hear from people. In they're going to need to be age. replaced. At Eventually, some point. anything made by man will have to be replaced. That's probably a true, true statement. And then so and th for us, I mean, the dams provide tons of hydroelectric power for TVA. And mm -hmm. that's where we get a lot of our electricity. Yes. And so. For them to, I mean, I think because a lot of people were like, are they not going to replace it? Are they not going to fix it? And I was, I wasn't ever worried that they weren't. They were, I just knew it was going to happen. But yep. Yep. was that even talk? Not to my knowledge. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that right. was not going to happen here. <laughs> right. Plus you got property value owner. I mean, mm -hmm. pro you know, they would have been, it would have just been a mess. So yes, here we are. We have muddy seep. We have a, an internal erosion issue, potentially. Mm -hmm. You said that could be the number two cause of a dam failure. What's, right. What's number one cause of dam over failure? Overtopping, when water actually comes over the top of a dam. That's oh. the number one. And that does probably happen from floods, maybe? Uh, or... Well, you know, you hear about it, particularly on an international scale. You hear about that happening from time to time. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually, I'm glad I just mentioned international. I think that's another aspect of the project that probably a lot of people don't know about it. International mines, mines from all over the world were brought in to work on this project. And so I got to sit there. You were saying you're not an engineer. That's for sure. I'm not. But I am a communicator and I would listen to not only highly technical language every morning, but also very accented language. Right. It could be Italians, French, um, uh, Morocco, I think Australia, oh, wow. United Kingdom, for sure. All these accents. And it was so fun to have all these people together in a room and the lead expertise from TVA, of course. And I would listen to all this and then basically synthesize it into information I could share with you guys. Because believe me, realtors were a big part of our stakeholder group. You guys were very interested in what was going we on. We were very interested. Mm -hmm. I'm still always interested in what's going on in our community and, yeah, and the dam and um, the lake and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, it's, um, it's fun to have a good friend who's running it all. Or she was <laughs> well, running it all. the communications part. Communications yeah. part yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, so... It was a lot of fun, and like you uh, mentioned when we were chatting earlier, I, I actually had a community relations office. There was a little trailer there um, at the base of the dam, and it was fun because the public could get to me and I could get to the public, and we had drawings that we could show them what we were doing. Um, we had a model dam. That's something I would definitely I read that in here. Recommend. I was like, man, I didn't get to see the model. I had this, I had this vision. If only I could have a model to take out to school groups because we were talking to so many STEM groups. And yeah. School kids from like kindergarten through the ETSU geosciences yeah. program. Dr. Nandy would bring her students out there every year. It was so fun. And one of them even got a job through that. Oh, that's cool. Um, but, but talk about having an amazing geosciences project in your backyard. And um, so I thought, if only we could have this model. And I shared that with some of these wonderful, brilliant people I got to work with. And they created using LIDAR data, which is like when you beam, you know, and you measure exactly. I don't believe me. I don't know the signs of it all, but they, um, and then also 3d printing and they created a model that looked like a puzzle. And the puzzle piece that came out of it was where the, um, underground cutoff wall was. And I should mention, um, the ultimate fix here after they went to work and began studying after they had this discovery of the muddy seep, they came up with, um, several different, uh, fixes. And the ultimate fix was called a composite seepage barrier. And that was kind of a three-pronged 
uh, belt and suspenders type fix. They stabilized the dam with rock berms. They came along and did a drilling and grouting program along the top of this dam. And it's only about the length of two football fields. It's not a very big space. And you had a couple hundred people working on this project just on the site um, for at least a couple of years of yeah. it, day and night. If you they remember, there be, was yeah. nighttime jobs Oh my too. gosh. It was on nonstop. Everybody was <laughs> it like, was, it was, because we wanted to get it up too. <laughs> exactly. And um, so it, it, and then the, um, probably the showpiece of it, because it involved the largest uh, pieces of heavy equipment and major, major drills, was this underground cutoff wall, um, which was these massive, massive uh, round uh, concrete pilings drilled down up to 170 feet down I under read the dam. That 170 feet Isn't down. that amazing? amazing? And about 50 inches around. So picture overlapping circular concrete piles all the way down the dam. And it literally cut off, though, that was the name. It cut off that seepage from occurring under that and through that earthen embankment. So it was fascinating. It was a great project. We actually won a bunch of international awards for it, too, several that's really cool. cool awards and community relations was a component of it. So that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank yeah. You. Um, I think we you did a great job because we always kind of knew what was happening and knew what was going on. And it, it, I'll read, see the news or reading the paper. Hey, this we're at phase three or phase. Mm -hmm. you know, we're working through it. And um, yeah, I mean, we're all excited because we want to go back on the lake and we want to see it back up. And um, and I know a lot of people wanted to just enjoy the lake. Um, and so how was it, was everybody like easy to deal with when you were with? <laughs> oh yeah, sure, super <laughs> Everybody's easy. Everybody's just yeah. super excited about the dam, you know, the water being low and they can't use their boats and hey, my boat's stuck in the mud. Can you get that out? You know, kind of thing. So I actually share stories, you know, when I, when I first was going to work on it um, and the way I heard about it was through our local public relations society. My then po boss put out a notice. She wanted somebody who knew the local community who could communicate. And I had two college students with me um, at the meeting and we were coming home and I was like, oh man, this sounds great. And so they were enthusiastic. They want to know why. And I said, wow, you know, major project. And basically you're turning an aircraft carry around in terms of mm -hmm. how you're shifting public opinion from an incredibly negative and devastating. We certainly understood that to the public. Mm -hmm. Your lake's going to be down five to seven years, you yeah, know? That's a big deal. Significantly. Sure. And we didn't know about it, right? I guess in other, let's like, say down the road in Knoxville, they Norris Dam, would you would they communicate that ahead of time and say, look, we're gonna, the dam is fifty years old. We're going to replace it in the next ten years. Well, I wouldn't know, I know anything to speculate about another dam, but in this case, it was actually a situation where they were having to create the fix in real time. You right. know, you're into real estate, yeah. But if you were going to build a house, you'd probably go out and get the builder and have plans and have all these things worked out before you unveiled it to your friends. Sure. But in this case, the public knew what was going on, and then the effects had to be created in real time. Right. And then it had to be unveiled. And we're hearing, we're hearing about surveys and studies, mm -hmm. and, oh, we think it's this, we mm -hmm. think it's that, we're going to try this, we're going to try that, we're looking mm -hmm. at this. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of talk around it. And the right. cool thing is you were helping architect all that talk. It, it was a lot of fun. And honestly, at first, I, I liked a kid, because we became such good friends with people, specifically, I'm thinking of the Boone Lake Association, they ended up just being great to work with. We'd bring volunteers out. We'd do the annual cleanup day. But initially, it was arms folded. And is she really going to even show back up again? I don't think they believed I would. But I, I like to say half a life is showing up, right, Colin? Yes. And Amen. so guess what? I'm back the next month, there the next go. month, and the that. next month. And then we would, um, in terms of tools for communication, I used a newsletter. And we had an incredibly high open rate. Because if they subscribed, they want to know what was going on. I was on, on that email list for Great. the Boone Lake. Yeah, Great. it was cool. Uh, Twitter was the uh, tool of choice at yep. that time, uh, the social media tool. And the media would pick up on the videos and photos that I would use and that I would take out on the dam. And then they would reuse them in the media. So that was really handy, too, and a great way to share. And then we did media updates and stakeholder updates. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a boat ride. We took the media on a boat ride, and that was a really fun one. They loved that one. To oh, this I day, I have reporters say, that was the most fun media update because it gave them a view of the lake from a completely different perspective. I would have loved to have gone on that. Like <laughs> I, I mean, you never have the opportunity to see the damn that low and see it, what all y'all are doing. And, and mm -hmm. I think it would have been super cool to see it for it sure. At that, yeah, you'll have to show me some pictures. Sure. And talk to us about like, I know because you wrote the book about two project managers, communicators, that kind of thing. Talk to us about some tips on building trust 
with maybe some of the leaders of the group and then some of the leaders of the community and how you integrated all that and, 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 and brought them all together at the end of the story. Well, speaking of showing up, we did a tremendous amount of public speaking. Yeah. We went out and we were at every civic club going and talking, sharing what we're doing, keeping people updated, the stakeholder and media updates that I mentioned to you as well. And I think really listening to people, listening to their concerns. And I share the story of um, some folks that initially started out adversarial. And by the end, we were buddies. And um, actually the very final day, they even wanted a selfie with me. I'm like, really? <laughs> Aww. But that was like the ultimate compliment, right? right. That you've gone yeah. from starting in an adversarial position to working together. And in the one case that I'm thinking of, the person really just wanted to be heard. And then we realized, hey, this is a neighbor. This person can help us. And so vegetation management rose to the forefront because of just what you said. The water was lowered. Vegetation was starting to become an issue. And as a communicator, I was hearing that out in the community. It wasn't vegetation. I mean, it was vegetation, but it were, there were trees growing in the, in the lake. I mean, it became a, I mean, it was amazing how fast nature took over because you've got this raw, beautiful dirt that was covered up with water. I mean, you're talking thousands of acres and then boom, we have sunlight, we have moisture, we have seeds. And I was amazed at how the trees grew up so quickly and then I was like, I would drive by across the lake and I'd be like, how are they going to deal with all this? So I thought it was amazing how they, you guys dealt with it all at the end. Um, you just reminded me, I think one of the, uh, do you remember somebody put like a little golf course on the back? <laughs> yeah. I haven't thought of that too. Just mentioned that. People were very creative. Yes, they were. Yeah. My yard is huge now. It goes <laughs> yep. way out into the lake. Yes. Exactly. I do remember seeing that. And I wanted to like see that huge piece of equipment that just came and chewed up everything. It did. And that was Unbelievable. That's what we did to work with the neighbors. And we so we started getting involved in mulching and, and really working together and cleaning up um, both the vegetation and the lake. And so this person that I mentioned that initially started out adversarial was very helpful. And we go out ahead of us and knock on neighbors' doors or let them know, hey, they're going to be coming out. And if you'd like this cove cleaned up, we'll be there. So. And I think uh, you guys did a great job in tying the community in, too, to come and help and um and just bring everybody together, really. Rally around it. I'm glad you mentioned community because um, as a group, we formed a committee um, on the site because we knew, we knew we were being, it was a challenge for the community, but we wanted to give back as much as we could. And so they voted, the group voted, we want to support Marine Corps Toys for Tots and Second Harvest Food Bank. And we ended up being the biggest, quote, corporate donors, and that was all the contractors put together. Uh, to both of those agencies the whole time we were here. That's awesome. So we really did give back as much as we could possibly do. Um, yeah, you know. and I think that's probably something that, you know, you don't hear as much about, right? No, you probably don't, but we were glad to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And um, talk about, I'm looking at your, your book and I'm headed towards the end, um, Power of Dreams. <laughs> so stress, pressure, and dreams of the wrong way. <laughs> well, uh, I think sometimes... I, I, that actually um, is about the, I had a little bout with insomnia there in that part of the book <laughs> where I was like, oh, where am I going? Yeah. But I knew it was coming to the end. Yeah. And really even more important than the, that dream part of it is the vision. And I think it's so important to have a vision, whatever you're doing. Mm. And so as we were coming towards the last year of the project, I, I got a photo from July of 2014 when the lake still looked beautiful and gorgeous. And there's that lovely recreation area there mm -hmm. by the dam. Mm -hmm. And so for seven years, people couldn't use that. I put that photo on my computer as a screensaver. So every day I logged on and I would look at that beautiful beach. And um, you know what? On May 22nd, 2022, when we had the large grand opening again, and we had 150 stakeholders out there and a big ribbon cutting. And then we had uh, about two hours to turn the right side around and welcome the public back. And we had all of our wonderful engineers, geologists, um, our partners, some of whom I mentioned, TWRA was another one because we did a lot of stuff with fish and our internal partners, everybody was there together welcoming the public back. And I could see my um, husband and my son coming along in his white pickup truck. And it was just like the most exciting thing after all those years of not being able to welcome the public. Yeah. And now here they come. And as I was waiting for them uh, and they were driving up, this family came towards me and they said, can we go swimming? <laughs> and I said, absolutely. Yeah. That's and, what it's for. and they jumped in the water and like everybody started jumping in after other families visiting. 
And it was just the best feeling, like that vision of the dam with the beach area from July of 2014. Mm -hmm. And there I was looking at it back in 2022. So it's important to have those goals out in front of you, right? Yeah. And you guys made it on time, right? I mean, yes. It was a five to seven ballpark and mm -hmm. you came in right around there. Yes. The lake actually started to come back six years um, in. Mm -hmm. There was some, it was an experimental year, but it was up to full pool during that time. And then it was officially back at the end of uh, seven years. So it was on time, under budget, and um, done safely. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And that people really have to realize, we kind of um, covered it briefly in the beginning, but it was all about safety. You have to keep the people downstream safe. You have to keep the workers safe. Amen. And that's really what it's about. And you know, there were, there were some people that would be like, well, Hoover Dam was fixed in two years. Well, tragically, Hoover Dam lost 96 people in the process. You would never accept losing one person today. That's oh absolutely God. unacceptable. So we have greater safety regulations now, but we're keeping people safer. So. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's awful. Um, and I just went somewhere. I was like, that's not good <laughs> thinking about losing people on under it. Um, you never want to do that anymore, but yeah. it's hard to believe they, they would accept they that. They would just fact. accept that. Yeah. They're like, eh. Um, how is it built now? How long do we have a dam for in ballpark? <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't for know. For our lifetimes, Mary. <laughs> uh, yeah, certainly, I would think so. I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I'll and, be 100 And I know they did years. a great job. And like I said, they called on expertise from around the world. So it was really an exciting project. Did they basically rebuild the whole thing while they were doing this? or is Yeah, it... that's uh, in the earthen embankment portion. The concrete portion was always fine. It's fine. But the earthen embankment is pretty much a new dam under there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then we're good for maybe another We're 15, good for a while. <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, I loved reading in your book how you were talking about being, you know, being confident and yes. throughout the, the process. And because people are looking to you as the communicator, mm -hmm. is this thing, Mary Ellen, is this thing going to work? Is this project going to work? Are we going to have a lake? Or, you know, and, and then for you to carry yourself confidently, what did that do for the media and for the and for our community? Well, thank you. Yes, it was important in terms of people, especially people connected to real estate would ask me that. Are they really going to do this? Is this really going to work? And, and of course, I would always answer yes, because I knew they were. Absolutely. But um, our project manager was the subject matter expert who was often interviewed on TV news and, you know, in the media. And uh, he did a great job of that. He was very confident. And he would get asked that, the mic in his face kind of thing. Are you confident about this, Bex? How are you going to fix it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I am confident. And, and that confidence then radiates it gets carried through to the media and on, out to the public and i think that was very very important and to all the guys working on it right i mean absolutely like, if you don't right. believe in what you're doing it's not going to go very well you're right same with your book if you didn't believe you could write it it's not going to show up well and every day started with a safety moment you know every meeting started with a safety moment safety was just always the top priority yeah and they got that the workers out on top of the dam that you mentioned so yeah that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love too reading that you had, you walked and pray, prayed around the dam all the time, <laughs> which is just really cool. Yes. Well, thank you. And, and you even started this before we began taping that yeah. uh, we had a prayer and that was really neat to me. But um, I called it my labyrinth and it was just my little parking lot area because I just basically would take a little quick lunch break and get back to work. But um, I would walk and, and pray about the whole project and yeah. the How folks on it. Let me focus, jump in on that a little bit. How do you feel like um, the Lord says somebody may be listening? How do you feel like that's dealing with a project that they're like, how do you feel like he advised you and comforted you during that process while you pray about stuff? I think he kept me safe. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, I share a story where this guy just barged into my office and really was kind of crazy. And I worked in a trailer with two armed guards but just the way the timing worked out, they were out on their front porch in the completely opposite area. No offense to them. They were absolutely right. wonderful guys. But just the timing of that particular moment when this guy barged in. And um, I, I'm sure I was definitely uttering some prayers to God right then because I didn't know this guy was definitely a loose You might not have made it out of there. He yeah. was a little off. And he was really the only person that I dealt with on the whole time that I can think of that was that far right. off that I had to be really concerned. And then from then on, we just we just locked the door where he came in and they had to go through the armed guards in the future uh, to get to me. So that would have been a key that he kept me safe. And I think that he led me in terms of, you know, when you first start out, you're kind of looking for direction. So I think it's for me, it's always really important mm. to pray for God's leading and, and his direction. Mm -hmm. And he gave me that. And I think that the 
wonderful leadership staff on the project very quickly then assimilated me in with the manager's team. Mm -hmm. And, and you have to be in that group mm -hmm. to be effective as a communicator. Yeah. You have to have that seat at the table. You want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Exactly. Yeah. And so that was very helpful as well. Yeah, I think it's cool that he ultimately puts you into marketing. Like, you know, the way I look back on my life and I'm like, he has led me, the Lord has led me in just different ways all throughout my life and whether I'm realizing it or not, but he puts you on this project with a dam for a reason and you know and, and then here it is we're talking about it now and it's just cool i love how it how it all works and mm -hmm. um, what else would you like to share about the 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 project before we um ask some other questions well i i wouldn't mind to share where people can find the book if they like of it. of course yeah <laughs> i think it's all you know, yeah yeah uh, it's uh, on amazon there's the paperback book it's an easy read it's less than 100 pages it's available on Amazon. I also narrated it, having mm -hmm. been a broadcaster. Um, that wasn't too bad. You can listen to this and lovely lady's voice <laughs> read it to you. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I know some people, uh, just a friend the other day who said, well, I don't read like this anymore. I just audio. Audible, audible, yeah. yeah. And I said, well, great. I did that as well. Oh, yeah. Downloaded <laughs> so she it. downloaded That's it right, right away. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then the third way is the e-reader, if they yeah. like it like that. Yeah. And then if they want to go into a store and find my book, the Jonesboro Visitor Center is carrying it. And I've actually had to restock. I am thrilled to have the Jonesboro Visitor Center carrying my book. That's and awesome. Yes. So glad to promote them as well. So you're, um, yeah. So Download her book, go on Amazon, buy it, give her a great review. She's awesome. And it's a cool story. I love how you took a project and then you turned it into one, a historical document for us to kind of get record of it, of the, the process with the dam. But then you're also turning it into a teachable moment for other people who may be looking at the same thing. Hey, I'm in Wyoming and I'm doing a dam project and here we go. Exactly. And so, you know, I can, I can use it that way too. So I think it's really cool how you've done it and so Thank bravo you. to you congratulations i think it's awesome thank you very much um, so yeah listeners grab it it's great and you can connect how can they connect with you directly if they just want to say i want you to tell me all about this project well my business is marketingmel.com mm -hmm. i am a public relations consultant again yeah, I'm you back are. on my own again. there you go um so they can connect through my website because my nickname is mel i'll say yeah. marketingmel.com marketing mel. i've known um, you like that since and i'm years. on i'm on linktree so uh just any social media pretty much and it's all marketing mel so uh however they want to connect me with me on social media i really liked it linkedin i think that's a good way it is a good way to okay. keep up to date yeah. professionally so yeah. that's a good one okay so you can reach out to her on that mm -hmm. all right Back to Johnson City. Sure. Um, what are you doing? What are you working on now here in town or in the area? Well, I'm really fortunate that I get to work with the Washington County Commission and the folks, the leadership of Washington County. Oh, nice. Um, um, they hired me to help them out as a communications consultant. So yeah. since the project ended in since September of 22, gosh, yeah, it's hard to believe it's already coming up on two years. I've been helping out Washington County. Joe Grandy needs all the help he can get. Right? I love working with Mayor Grandy. He's great. I'm actually helping him with a video right now for the city, county, town lunch. And oh. You need to come April 11th. Oh, that'd be cool. So working yeah. on that, pulling back on the old resources of uh, video production. It's crazy love, what you get into. I love Joe. He was a guest on our air a long time ago. Yep. So. He's great to work with and the commissioners mm -hmm. and, and all the officials, really. They're a lot of fun. And um, they do an excellent job. So that's that's fun. And then um, I also help Monique Carr Fine Artist with her newsletter. Um, I just love going and sitting in her fine art studio right here in Johnson City. She has it in her home. Oh, wow. But you sit there with these incredible paintings surrounded by this beautiful artwork. And she's talking to me, and I'm write, busily writing down story ideas for her for her newsletter. Oh, that's, that's what cool. I help her with. Because her time is better served to be painting and not to be writing. What type of painting does she do? Um, oh my, it's a lot of abstract and also landscapes. Oh, cool. And her landscapes, particularly when she does the seascapes, sell really well over in Charleston. Uh -huh. She's at Dare Gallery over there. She's also um, in some galleries in Western North Carolina and then down in Florida as well. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck with that for sure. Sure. All right. Um, tell me your husband's name again. His name is Dan or Danny Miller, and he is actually director of administration and finance of our church, Grace Fellowship Church. Mm -hmm. So don't mind giving them a plug either. Give them a plug. Yeah. Uh, they're a wonderful church. They're a wonderful church. A lot and, for and our he's, community. He's a great guy. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. You and Dan are going on a date. Where are you going to go? <laughs> well, yesterday we went to the Tweetsie Trail running. <laughs> That's pretty common actually That's for us. Inexpensive, healthy. It's great. <laughs> so... Um, 
Do you guys and like then, to hike and do a lot of that? Yeah, we do a lot of outdoor stuff. We love Watauga Lake. We keep a pontoon oh, so, boat on Watauga so Lake. Up there. So yeah. that's probably one of our favorite summer dates is just mm -hmm. even bringing food onto the boat and just hanging out. Yeah. Um, and any, my husband really loves Firehouse, so we're often seen there. I love the Firehouse. Good local, they, delicious food. It's so good. But so we're good. out and about quite a bit, so. What's um, your favorite place to get a hamburger? Do you even eat cheeseburgers? You're pretty healthy. <laughs> I really don't usually eat hamburgers out. I hate to tell you. You don't eat a hamburger out, man. Uh, We're going to have to go get you a cheeseburger. I would tell you Pals. Where's your favorite place? Pals is fantastic. And then right behind us, the label. They make a mean burger. I've and heard Gourmet's that. burger is fantastic. Anything from Gourmet. Do you guys eat out a lot or no? Um, so, Not much. But Gourmet I love. All right. Well, Excellent food. If you're going out to eat, where are you going to go and why? Um, this is like just for our listeners to get a little for food. like really fine dining, whatever you're thinking. I mean, okay. it could be well, falafel and we're going to go to fine, Babylon where we went yesterday. Um, fine dining. I really like, uh, gourmet. Mm. I think it's delicious. Yeah. And Howard I, and Vaughn do a great job. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I, I don't know how you beat that. It is good. That's <laughs> right. Really but yeah. gosh, we have so many great places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you and um, Dan like to do for fun here in town besides run on the Tootsie Trail and go um, up to the lake? Anything and we've else? done a ride with Spark on a, a uh, Trek bicycle. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Just riding bikes Like around. the taco Trek yeah. thing where you, yep. like, there's a group of people they meet up. Is it Thursdays in the summer? Um, they did Tuesdays? a special one for Spark Plaza. They've done a couple of okay. them that we've done with them. I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, they do the did. taco Trek. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, so they, they, you can meet at the uh, Trek bicycle shop and rent a bike if you don't have one. Mm -hmm. And you ride around, and then you get a taco, and I think you get a free half a beer or something yeah. with Yeehaw. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. How good so a deal is that? That was a lot of fun. Yeah. We did that a few times last summer, so um, I don't know. <laughs> of what course. Are, yeah, no, you're good. Um, like, what are some of the events that you look forward to in Johnson City over the over the course of a year? I love Meet the Mountains Festival. Mm. I love that one. Yeah, and they moved it down to... Uh, Wing Deer Wing last Deer Park. year. That's right. Yeah. You always meet... Uh, cool and interesting people. Um, it wouldn't I, have gone so well seven years ago over there at Wing Deer Park. Yeah, they probably... Uh, they meet meet <laughs> the <wouldn't> mud. <laughs> <laughs> but see, look, that's another thing that, like, you've impacted. You you know, you guys got the damn fixed. They're back. And, and but gosh, I have a hand lotion that I'm just about run, to run out of that I got from a vendor there that it's just like, oh, I can't wait to meet the Mountains Festival again so I get, to, so get some more of this. Fancy hand lotion. Awesome hand lotion. And my son loves um, the disc golf. Oh, yeah. And um, so I, I called him or texted him when I was down there, and he showed up in like five minutes because there were all these disc golf vendors oh, down there. Nice. And he loves to get his different, you know, it's like golf. It golf. is like They golf. have to have the different sizes and all that. So that was fun. They just have everything there. It's a, it's Do you guys go festival. to um, like uh, the winter, like Candyland Christmas around? Oh, Thunder yes. Park? Our church group goes over there every Christmas. Mm -hmm. We look forward to that. Blue Plum Festival, do you guys go to oh, that? Oh, yes, yes. And then First Friday's down here sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, yes. Yeah, you can get, there are a lot of vendors down there for uh -huh. that. Um, Gosh, you're just mentioning all the wonderful Well, I'm trying to, have. you know, I want everybody to come to Johnson City and make it their home because it's awesome. And then they're going to bring other cool stuff, and it's just going to continue to grow. And, you know, we are growing. Just another article. Don Fenley is such a whiz um, with his articles, and he came out with one today about the growth of Washington County and Johnson City. Well, just, educate us. What is it? Do you remember oh some of the goodness. stats? Oh, um, How much have we grown in the last it 10 was, years? It was in the, oh, it wasn't 10 years. He was just giving the one-year update. He, it, I know it was over 1,000 people for sure have come into Washington County. Isn't that crazy? In one year, we're talking about. I know. We, so, can't, find, we can't build houses fast enough. Isn't it crazy? It's, it's crazy. But luckily, the builders are getting after it. We've got some bigger builders here, like D.R. Horton. They're building a thousand houses a year, so that will help. Um, but we've been slow. We've been behind for a long time, uh, nationally and locally, I think. So mm -hmm. we'll just keep growing and keep synergizing. But I do jokingly say, but not so jokingly, if you're not really nice, just don't make our area home because I think the people are what make it so awesome. Oh my goodness! Like you, you sound like the barter theater there. You know how they That's always right. say, if you like us, tell everybody, and if you don't, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> exactly. That's right. If you like us, stop and stay, and if you don't like us, just keep driving. Keep on going. Keep on trucking. <laughs> I love it. 
Anything that I forgot to ask you that you'd love to share about? Well, I'd like to share about the mentorship that I do. I just think it's so important. When you were talking about fired up on some of your other ones, mm -hmm. I'm fired up about the next generation, Colin. I love the next generation. I love them too. Um, we I got son, two of them. My son's a member of it. Like Here's this too. Um, but it's so fun to have a college student around. But also, I sponsor a marketing male PR scholarship oh, at ETSU. Fun. And I've done that for several years. But just to meet the students who win that scholarship, you know, these professors have handpicked these really sharp rising communicators and watch where they go. And a number of them, either if they've won the scholarship or just through other things, I've had them as interns through the years. And it's fabulous to stay in touch with them through social media and so forth, but to see them go on to really great things. It, it is fires rewarding. me up. It fires you up. It's mm -hmm. so rewarding. And um, I think that's what we're created for is to love people and give back to them and inspire them and help them grow and, and see where, you know, where they're going to go because if we're just focused on ourselves, it's a pretty small world we live in. You're right. Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. That's cool. It's all about giving back. It is all about giving back. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for bringing in your damn book and talking <laughs> about the dam and how you uh, worked with the all the damn engineers and all the guys working over there. And so I, I, um, I'm joking. It was it was um, such a good, I, I loved reading it. I'm looking forward to finishing it. So thank you for coming in and talking to us about it. I'm hoping our listeners had a great time listening and learning about you. And I just wish you the best. I'm, you make Johnson City a great place. Um, so thank you so much. Thanks for thank being you. my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Till next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to move here, we would love to help you do that, unless you're a jerk. Just kidding. <laughs> and then if you uh, want to invest in real estate, we help lots of people, Mary Ellen, build wealth through real estate. We manage property. If you have a HOA neighborhood that you want managed, we do that as well. So just reach out to us. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great spring. And until next time, talk to you soon.